Okay, 2-5, this will probably be some of the quickest notes you ever took because uh, there's not even a real lesson here. It's just um, us reviewing some basic postulates. So students will be able to identify basic postulates. And a postulate or an axiom is a statement that describes a fundamental relationship between the basic terms of geometry. So it's an accepted statement of fact. All right, It's not something that we need to prove. It's just an accepted statement of fact, and it's usually kind of obvious. All right, so let's go to the next um, all right, let's just talk about a couple of these. Through any two points, there's exactly one line. That's something we've talked about before. And through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. Um, these next two postulates are the converse of that. Uh, it says a line contains at least two points, and a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. So those are some basic things. But these are things we've already discussed in class. Um, postulate 2, 5, if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those two points lies in that plane. So imagine that your, your television screen is a plane, here's point A, here's point B. All they're saying is, hey, if A and B are on this same plane as your, plane as your uh, computer screen or television screen or whatever, then the line that contains AB is also on that plane. The whole line has got to be on that plane because the they go on and on and on forever. Uh, if two lines intersect, so if I had a line and a line intersect, their intersection is exactly one point. Okay, when two lines intersect, their intersection is a point. And if two, that should be, if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. All right, a theorem. This is a statement or conjecture that has been proven to be true. Okay, so we have to prove these things true. Um, we're going to prove some theorems in the next couple lessons. And a proof is a logical argument in which each statement you make is supported by a statement that is accepted and true. So I'm going to give you an example of a proof here in just a second. Um... It's usually going to start off with some given information, and they're going to ask us to prove something. And whatever they're asking us to prove, that's going to be our last statement. Um, probably not a good idea to write it right now just because we want to write it in order. But just so you know, whatever that thing is that they're asking you to prove is going to be our last statement. And so you're going to list all these true statements, and they're all going to follow logically. And over here, you're going to have the reasons why you can make those statements. So let me give you um, an example. Let's start off with our given information. That is the information that we know to be true, and that's just that M is the midpoint. Of PQ. And how did I know that? Well, since it's just given, I just say given. As in given information. It's free information. Okay. Well, what does that mean? If M is the midpoint of PQ, we could kind of draw this out if we wanted to. Here's M, here's P, here's Q. Doesn't that mean that these two things are equal, right? By definition, if M's in the middle, then this has to be the same as that. So we could say that PM is equal to MQ. And how do we know that? Well, that's just the definition of a midpoint, All right? By very definition, to be in the middle of two things means that you are equidistant from each of them. So their distance is equal. And if two things are equal, well, then that's enough to say that um, they must uh, be congruent. If two segments are equal, they are congruent. And that's simply because that's the definition of congruence is for two things that have the same measure. So there's a quick example of a proof. Um, that's a really simple one, just three steps. But we'll be doing a lot of those and really similar ones. And we'll be adding um, a bunch of theorems and properties and different things that we could put over in this reason category. But remember that we can always use definitions to define our step. So we're going to be learning about definitions. We're going to be learning about theorems. We're going to be learning about uh, properties and rules, all these things that we can use as a, rep a repertoire of terms to, to use on this, uh, on different proofs. All right, that's it for 2.5. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.